Welcome back everyone, Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here, back again with Finance Basics, lesson number five, orders and fees. And if you haven't already seen our previous videos, make sure to go to our channel and check those out. There's lots of educational content about cryptocurrency and make sure to also subscribe while you're there because there's gonna be lots more free and educational and entertaining content coming out about cryptocurrency in the near future. And if you wanna show our support, make sure to like our videos and share with your friends as well. So let's hop right into it. All right, so what I did first is I took a screenshot of Binance here so I can explain to you what the order chart looks like on Binance. So on Binance, this is what is gonna be considered your order chart. Now, like I said, I took a screenshot because um, when you're live on Binance, these orders are always changing and fluctuating and it's kind of hard to teach people when they're going like that. So I took a screenshot here on Bitcoin versus the US dollar, Tether. And so right now where I took the screenshot, you can see that Bitcoin's price was currently at $7,846.21. Okay, so that's gonna be considered the market price at the moment. Now, you're gonna see this red section here and this green section below, as well as a combination over here on the right. Now this top section is gonna be called the ask orders. So these are orders where people are attempting to sell their Bitcoin for this price. So this is, so for example, someone is asking for $7,847.83 for Bitcoin. And now you can see the amount of Bitcoin right here in this column, the middle column that they are trying to sell. And then on the right, you will see the equivalent US dollar tether value. So in this case, for example, you can see right here that this order is trying to sell 0.004515 Bitcoin. So, you know, a very small portion of a Bitcoin at this price, which is the equivalent of $35 and about 43 cents. Now, right above that, you can also see that at this, uh, at this price, um, two cents higher, someone is trying to sell 1.44 Bitcoin, which is the equi equivalent of $11,303.30. Now I'm saying someone, but this can also be a group of multiple orders. So let's say, you know, you've got about $11,000 for sale here. This could actually be a combination of 11 different orders of people trying to sell their Bitcoin at this price. So this isn't just necessarily one person, but this is the entire amount of Bitcoin being asked at this price. Now on the opposite side, you have the, the bid, the bid orders, that's gonna be your green ones. And now this is the price at which people are attempting to buy Bitcoin. And so for example, right here, you can see that someone is trying to buy um, about, or you know, a group of people are trying to buy about $1,300 or 0.17 Bitcoin at this price of $7,846.21. So again, you can see right here that this is the highest price on the market currently that someone is willing to buy Bitcoin for. So if you had this amount of Bitcoin listed here, you could sell it to this buyer or this group of buyers. And it goes, um, it's always the best price at the top on the bid chart and the lowest or the best price on the ask chart. So you can see that uh, as people are trying to sell, um, there's all these different orders that are at different prices uh, above that price. And then as well as the buys, there's prices that are below. And as you notice here, there's about a dollar difference right here in between these two prices. Now that's what they would call a spread. So that just is showing that, you know, the prices, they're trying to meet an, 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 an equilibrium but it doesn't always happen that way. So there's sometimes a spread, sometimes it's larger, sometimes it's smaller. Um, low volume coins generally has a lot higher of a spread because orders aren't going through as fast. But with a coin like Bitcoin, there's always orders going through. So the spread is gonna be very small as the market tries to reach a equilibrium. But again, these are gonna be, um, you know, this is the ask and these are the bids or in simpler terms, these are the prices that people are trying to sell Bitcoin for and these are the prices that people are trying to buy Bitcoin for. And then all this is over here on the right, it's a live feed of the orders that are going through. So right here, you can see that there was an order to buy this amount of uh, this amount of Bitcoin at this price, and it shows you the time and all that. So this is just a live feed of all the orders that are actually going through at the moment. But again, these are your ask and bid prices. Okay, so now we need to talk about orders and how to actually place an order. So if we hop back into the actual live Binance here, you can see that this order chart is moving. So these are the orders that are getting filled that are actually going through. And then again, you have your asking your bid prices here. Uh, so the first type of order that Binance has is a limit order. 
Now, this is the majority of what you should be using because a limit order is gonna save you money on fees. So we'll talk about fees here in a little bit, but every time you buy or sell a cryptocurrency on Binance, there's always gonna be a fee. It's usually 0.1%, but again, we'll talk about those here in a few minutes. Uh, but limit order is gonna be saving you the most money on fees, and it's also gonna make sure that you get the price that you want. So uh, for example, a, a limit order basically is just saying that uh, whatever price you put in here, let's say you were going to buy Bitcoin, and if you said you wanted to buy Bitcoin, so right now you can see that the current market price is $7,821, and we're sitting right about here. But let's say you were wanting to buy Bitcoin at a lower price. You think that Bitcoin might come back down here to this region, so which is around 7600 So you could put in your order, your limit order, for 7600 and you could type in the amount of Bitcoin that you want to buy. Um, say you wanted to buy five Bitcoin. So what this is saying right here is that you want to buy five Bitcoin, but the reason that it's called a limit order is because you are putting your limit at $7,600. So you're saying that $7,600 is the maximum amount of money that you will pay for your Bitcoin. Now, you could get that price or better. So let's say uh, you had your limit order in here at 7,600, but then the price suddenly dropped down to 7,500. It would fill your order at 7,500 first, all the way up until it, it, you hit your limit. If it went over 7,600, it would stop filling your order because you set your limit at 7,600. So again, this is just saying, this is the most I'll pay for Bitcoin. I don't wanna pay any more than 7,600. So it'll fill orders as best as possible, getting you the best price possible up until 7,600. It wouldn't fill an order that costed you over 7,600 because that was your limit. Same thing goes for sell. Let's say you wanted to sell your Bitcoin at $8,000, uh, however many, whatever, let's say five again. Now what this is saying on this side is that 8,000 is the minimum amount that you will sell your Bitcoin for. So it wouldn't fill your order at a price lower than 8,000, but it'll fill it at 8,000 or better. Again, limits are always at that price you set or better. It's always better to get a, you know, it's always better to, to buy at a lower price than you said or sell at a higher price. So it's gonna give you your, your amount that you say or the price that you say or better, all right? Now, again, limit orders are gonna be uh, saving you money on fees and it allows you to kind of set a better, you know, a more solid price that you're willing to pay or that you're willing to sell your coin for. Now, for example, I'm holding Tron right now. So let's say I wanted to sell some of my Tron. And right now the current price is about 2.7 cents around there. Let's say I wanted to sell my Tron at 3 cents, okay? Let's say I wanted to sell about $5,000 worth of Tron at 3 cents, okay? So if you watch, I can go ahead and hit sell on my limit. So I set my price at three cents, which again is just saying that I do not want to sell my Tron for any less than three cents. So I'd hit sell. And obviously because the market price isn't at three cents, that order is not going to fill. It's going to show up here in your open orders tab uh, once I hit refresh. And so now, as you can see, my order that is waiting to be filled shows up right here. And it says filled percent is 0%. Because again, the market price hasn't gone up to 3 cents. It's still at 2.7 over here. And so I'm just waiting. Uh, my order won't fill until it gets to 3 cents or better. And it shows you the amount that you're trying to sell, when you placed the order, and how much equivalent it is to your currency. Now, the reason that it has percentage filled over here is because people could buy portions of your order. So again, I'm trying to sell this amount of Tron. Someone could come in here and buy half of that amount at this price and my order would be 50% filled. Now you have these other tabs here. You have order history, which is going to show all your different orders as well as trade history and trade history breaks it down into those different, um, into those different buys. So again, like I said, if someone bought a portion of your order, no, your order is not always going to get filled in one um, transaction from another person. It could be a few different people buying away. Let's say you sold $50,000 worth of Bitcoin. You know, five different people could buy $10,000 worth of your Bitcoin and fill it up little by little. And as you can see right here, it kind of shows you the um, different 
trades that actually go through. And right here you can see the fee. Again, it's usually 0.1%. So you can see that the fee on this was 90 Tron, 19 Tron, 59 Tron. Uh, and, and we can get more in depth on fees here in a little bit. But uh, for now, I was just showing you how to place a basic order. And also on the chart, um, once the price gets closer to your region that you're trying to sell at, you'll be able to actually see your order on the chart. So let me do that for you real quick so I can show you. Let me cancel. You can always cancel orders right here so that it hasn't been filled yet. So you can click cancel and it'll cancel your order out. Now, let's say I was trying to sell my Tron for, uh, you know, 2.7 up in this area here. So if I went like this to 2.7, let's say 05 and hit sell, right there, now I have this yellow arrow, which denotes that this is my order. And you can see that I sold about 6,400 worth of Tron but there's 7,000 here. So that means someone else is also trying to sell at that price. But again, it hasn't filled yet because the market price hasn't gotten to this price yet. It has to sell at these prices first before my order will get filled. So if you wanted to sell right away, you would see, okay, so this person is trying to buy. So you could actually sell to them by clicking on this order right here on the order chart. If you watch down here, as soon as I click on this, it puts that order here and then I can buy that order up. Okay, now the other type of order is uh, a market order. Now you mostly wanna stay away from market orders because, uh, so what market orders are is it's basically, let's say I wanted to buy, you know, let's say I wanted to buy 5,000 Tron or 500, yeah, whatever, 5,000 Tron. As soon as I hit buy, it's just gonna start buying these orders off of this chart until the amount is filled. There's no limit price, there's no set price, it's just gonna fill orders until you get all of the Tron that you requested. So it could be um, at a bunch of different prices, there's gonna be uh, higher fees on market orders, and there's also a term called slippage. So basically slippage is just saying that, you know, it's gonna be a bunch of different prices. You might try to buy at this market price, but if there's not enough orders to fill your, your requested amount at that price, then it's gonna buy all these different random orders until it gets you the amount that you want, therefore creating slippage, not getting you the price that you want. Same thing goes for selling, it's instant and it's gonna sell to a bunch of different uh, you know, people that are trying to buy as quick and as, uh, as soon as possible. So you might get a more slippage, a bunch of different random prices and not get that price that you wanted. Now, the only time that I use market orders, so for example, let's say that I had Bitcoin. Let's say I had Bitcoin over here and the price just started tanking. The price just started tanking, tanking, tanking. And if you tried to do a limit order to sell, your order might not get filled because the price is tanking so fast that it's just gonna blow past your limit before it can even get filled. So that's when a market order could save you. It's kind of like a last resort order to me. So if the price just started tanking, you could hit market sell everything and it's gonna get you out as soon as possible. But again, there's gonna be slippage of different prices as well as higher amounts of fees. Or the same thing could go the opposite direction. Let's say Bitcoin just started blowing up, just started skyrocketing and you couldn't get your buy orders filled and it just kept skipping over your buys and you couldn't get filled in time. You could hit market buy. But again, same thing, there's gonna be slippage, there's gonna be fees, but you will get your order filled. So again, market, market orders, I would stay away from those to save yourself some money on fees, but again, it's kind of like a last resort thing if you need to. Now, there's also stop limit on Binance. And this right here is gonna be your life saver, okay? So let's hop back over here to Tron. Um, so, so Tron's been doing all right these past few days. You know, it's been up and down a little bit, but uh, let's say that I, so I'm holding Tron currently and you should always have a stop loss set. I don't currently because I just took it off to uh, right before this video, but a stop loss is basically your lifesaver. So let's say you were going to bed, but you were holding Tron and you didn't want the price to drop overnight while you're sleeping or during the day if you're going out to lunch or something, you know, you're busy. So you can set what is called a stop limit order on Binance. And basically what that's saying is um, let's say you set a stop limit down here on Tron in this area. You know, if it got this low while you were sleeping, you can set a stop limit, which says, as soon as this price gets lower than wherever you say, Binance will sell your position automatically for you. 
So again, it, it's kind of like a last resort lifesaver. So let's say, you know, Tron's up here around the 2.7 cent range uh, and maybe I was gonna go to bed and if it got lower than 2.4 cents, I wanna sell to uh, cut my losses and not lose more. Because, um, you know, prices really can tank overnight. So a stop limit can definitely be your lifesaver. So the stop, so you can see that there's a stop and limit price here. So on Binance, this is pretty unique to Binance. On, on Binance, the stop price for a sell is gonna be the price at which your order is triggered. So let's say uh, I'm gonna go to bed and if it gets lower than 2.4 cents, I wanna sell uh, and not let it go any lower than that. Now, what you would put in for your limit, this is a, first, this is a mistake that a lot of people do. They'll put, their, they'll put their, their limit at the same price as their stop. Now you don't wanna do that because let me, it's kind of confusing, but the stop is the price at which your limit order will be placed. Okay, so for example, on Tron here, if I put my stop at 2.4 cents and my limit, as soon as Tron hits 2.4 cents, Binance will automatically place a sell order at 2.4 cents for me to eliminate my losses. But the problem with this setup right here is that if the price of Tron just tanks below this and then you set your, your limit and your order goes in to sell at 2.4 cents, but it just bombs past it, your stop limit's not gonna get filled and you're gonna wake up to a huge loss and that's gonna be a crappy day. So you're gonna wanna create what they call a range, okay? So let's say, again, I wanna sell if it gets lower than 2.4 cents. So the stop, again, is the trigger point, but the limit is where you're actually gonna sell at. So in this situation, you would wanna do something like this. Right, where, so what this is saying now is that once Tron gets below 2.4 cents, it's gonna place a sell limit for me, just like this limit order over here, same, same principle, where it's the maximum that you're willing to sell for. So at this point, once Tron gets below 2.4 cents, it's going to automatically place a limit sell for me at 2.395 cents. So what that means is it gives you a little bit of a range to get your order filled, since it won't always fill if you don't give a range. So you're, you're always gonna wanna give a range. You know, on something like Tron, um, kind of a 10 point range would be a decent amount. On Bitcoin, you might wanna do like a couple of dollars range. I, I know it can get confusing. Again, uh, we're gonna make more advanced videos on this later. I'm just trying to get the basics to you guys to, to start being able to place some orders. But let's say, again, let's say I was gonna go to bed and I wanna sell if it gets lower than here. So what that would do for me is allow me to sell this amount of Tron uh, you know, if it, if it got that low overnight. So again, it's like a lifesaver. Same thing goes for a buy. Let's say that you didn't wanna miss out on the market blowing up overnight. So you could say, okay, well, I wanna put a buy order if Tron gets higher than three cents. So you could say, okay, well, if Tron gets higher than three cents, I wanna buy it because it's, you know, it, it, it could keep going up. This is just an example. This is just an example. That's That wouldn't be a wise decision, you know. Um, but you would do something like this again, a 10 point range. And now what this is saying is once Tron, if you were sleeping or during the day or any time, hit three cents, it's automatically gonna place a buy order for you at this price. Or, and then you put in how much you wanna buy and you'll place your order. So stop limits can save your life or they can get you in on a trade when you're maybe not watching the charts. Um, but the most important tools that you're gonna be using are your limit orders, which is how you're going to get uh, buy cryptocurrency or sell cryptocurrency and then your stop limit, you're mostly gonna use sell stop limits to, to eliminate your losses. So for example, with my day trading strategy, uh, my stop limits are always set at half a percent. Um, so again, I'm going for 3% a day, but when I open a trade, I automatically set my stop loss at half a percent. So if I open that trade, let's say I bought some Bitcoin and the price of Bitcoin dropped half a percent and I had my stop loss set, it's automatically gonna sell for me and I eliminate my loss versus let's say you bought Bitcoin and then it just dropped like 10% and you didn't have a stop loss set. Now all of a sudden you're in the hole, thousands of dollars. So a stop loss is gonna save and eliminate your losses. Now, those are the basic types of orders. And like I said, there's always fees. So on Binance, if you go to their homepage by clicking up here and then scroll all the way down to the bottom where it has fees right here, click on that. 
and then it's going to take you to their fees page which is right here so when you're buying or selling on Binance there's always going to be fees it's all broken down right here um, Binance has some different levels of fees where you can actually get percent off your fees if you're holding more um, of their own Binance coin again we can chat a little bit more about that later but I'm just going to talk about the basic fees so there's two different types of fees there's a maker and a taker fee okay so what a maker fee is when you are making the market so a maker for example would be when you place an order and it goes on to the order book you're adding volume to the order book therefore you are making the market okay and then there's a taker fee a taker fee would be when you buy you know when you take something you're taking volume off of the order book so let's say you someone's again someone's trying to sell their Bitcoin for this amount if you bought that order if you click on this order and buy it you're gonna be a taker because you are taking volume off of the order book okay and so you can see that the fees are sometimes different once you get into these different VIP ranges I'm only general on this account so it's 0.1% maker and taker both ways but if you're holding Binance coin in your account it's actually uh, you get a little bit of a discount on the fees but as you can see once you get into these VIP ranges you can actually uh, you know the there's the taker fees are generally a little bit higher because you are taking from the market instead of making the market I know that can be uh, it can be a little bit confusing but you just need to remember the basic idea that there's always a fee and if you're just a basic beginner trader on Binance it's always going to be 0.1% on a buy or a sell um, so just remember that now again you have limit market and stop limit orders and there's always going to be fees it's super basic we're going to make more advanced videos on this topic later to save show you how to save more money on fees but I just wanted to be able to show you how to place orders how to buy cryptocurrency how to swap your cryptocurrencies and that sort of thing so the biggest takeaways again are going to be your limit and stop limit orders as well as you know you got to learn how to read the order book a little bit but again super simple today now you know how to read some order charts how to place some orders and how to kind of understand fees a little bit so thanks for tuning in make sure to hit that like button make sure to subscribe make sure to share our videos and also we are doing a huge giveaway when this channel hits a thousand subscribers so when this channel hits a thousand subscribers we're gonna be giving away to five different people five different people are gonna be getting 10,000 of our own ICG tokens as well as 10,000 BitTorrent tokens so make sure to share our channel and share with your friends because as soon as this gets to a thousand we're picking five random people to give some coins away to so again thanks for tuning in make sure to follow us on twitch at idaho crypto group instagram at idaho crypto group feel free to follow me on my own personal instagram and twitter which is right here and we'll catch you next time thanks again for tuning in